Okay, I'm very excited. I'm here with Dan Jevons from Shell. Uh, Dan is the general manager for data science here at Shell. Um, I've had the pleasure to work with Shell now for a number of years. I've worked with them, I helped them develop a data strategy and an AI strategy. And I thought it would be really useful to share some of the the use cases. So how is, a, is, is AI and data being used in Shell? Um, many people wouldn't necessarily associate Shell with a, a, a data science and AI company. So maybe you can share some of the, the yeah. amazing use cases because some of them are fascinating. Of course. Well, firstly, let me start with strategy. I know we always like to start with strategy. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that. I think that the biggest challenge we have is that as an industry, we need to deal with a, a huge transition that we're going through right now. So we need to deal with making the existing assets and the things that we do uh, within our conventional oil and gas business more effective and efficient. But we also need to transition to uh, lower carbon solutions. As Absolutely. Well. And so if you think about why is AI so important, AI is actually one of the key tools that helps us to do that. Mm. So let me give you some of the examples. So uh, if you think first of all about some of the emerging businesses, we're doing things like developing new solutions for electric vehicles, where we're providing the charging infrastructure at scale uh, for those new EVs. Huge transformation. Huge yeah, transformation. Absolutely. And, and the whole uh, mobility ecosystem is going to, going to transform in the coming years. And yeah. we want to be key and, and really help to drive that. But we also have big challenges. So if you're trying to install large banks of charges, uh, obviously, if you don't want to deal with very expensive grid upgrades, you need some form of optimization. Mm -hmm. And so AI is a great solution there because actually a lot of the time these EVs are, are stuck in parking spaces charging for extended periods of time. Mm -hmm. And if you can peak shave and move some of the charging around within those banks of charges, you can reduce the load on the grid. Mm -hmm. And of course, you could also optimize when the load happens towards the times when the amount of renewables on the grid is at its highest. Yeah. So it's a great opportunity to show how AI can help to drive us towards that new energy future. But of course, it's also highly relevant in our existing business as well. Yeah, so yeah, exploration, I yeah. guess, is, is one area that, that AI has become a, a really important tool. Do you want to share? Yeah, and, and obviously, you know, we've, we've shared about this before, but it's a great example of where some of the emerging imaging technologies can be applicable in our traditional businesses. So looking at faster ways to do the, the subsurface workflows that we've always done, looking at how the rock formations work together. Now, historically, we've been looking at that seismic data and using deep expertise to analyze it. Mm -hmm. By bringing that expertise in the form of labeled data, we can use things like deep learning to try to understand the subsurface much, much more quickly and reduce the cycle times quite dramatically. Mm. Now, the important thing there is that, of course, has applicability in making our existing business more effective, more efficient. Yeah. But it's also relevant in things like carbon capture and storage. So we're using some of those same approaches uh, in areas like our uh, Quest facility, where we've already captured 4 million tons of, of CO2. Mm. So it's great to see how that story of more effective and efficient in our existing business and also enabling the new, all of that being powered by AI. Okay, so how does that work in practice? Well, I, I think in practice, this is a big transformation. It's, yeah. a, it's a big journey. We, as Shell have said, AI is very important uh, to us as we move into the energy future. We recognize that digital technologies are really transforming the way that, that we work. And I guess what's important to recognize is that what we've learned is you can't simply take this technology and try and apply it to existing workflows. Mm. You have to also re-envisage the business model. And I know this is something that you're extremely passionate about. Uh, and so we've looked at things around what's the business trying to achieve. Yeah. And obviously you've helped us with a, a, quite a bit of this, yeah. where we're trying to establish uh, KPIs that are yeah. linked to business strategy, yeah. where we understand what data really matters and what sorts of initiatives are really gonna move the needle for yeah. us. Perfect. And so we've worked a lot in those areas. The other use case that I love is predictive maintenance. Yeah. This is something for a, a, a company that has these these huge assets. Yeah. Um, any any example, any really good example of how you're using predictive maintenance? Well, it's, I mean, again, it's a fantastic story of of this of those same principles of making the existing business more effective and efficient, and also being highly relevant to the new. So, if you think about uh, our core business right now, we have things like valves and compressors that run in our upstream facilities and our manufacturing facilities and ultimately when they break 
it actually has a knock-on effect both in terms of profitability but also in terms of CO2 because mm. of course the startup uh, and shutdown has a higher energy intensity mm. than running the asset stably and so there's a great business case there uh, and so we've been developing those solutions as I said valves and compressors were two of the big opportunities that we mm. saw and we've developed solutions for both of those which we're now rolling out at scale but we're also seeing opportunities as we move into some of these new assets so we're now trying to apply some of the same algorithms to monitor things like electric charges and wind farms mm. because those assets also break, also have downtime Absolutely. and these solutions are very relevant there as well. Very good and then um, real-time process automation, yeah. another? Uh, again another great example, I mean maybe we'll know that one of the most effective ways to transition uh, from if you like traditional uh, heavier forms of CO2 to lower grade forms of CO2 in terms of and it, it, it CO2 intensity in terms mm -hmm. of electricity generation is to move uh, from coal and, and oil fire towards gas and so Shell's made a big play to move uh, towards more of that gas-based electricity generation and so things like liquefied natural gas have, have a great we think a great part to play in reducing CO2 intensity. Mm -hmm. um, so we're working hard on that. And of course, but if you're doing that, you need to run these assets really well. Mm -hmm. And you need to make sure that you keep a low CO2 intensity and, and that you monitor them closely. And so again, another example, real-time production optimization is uh, a solution that we've developed where we optimize the overall operations of an LNG train in order to maximize the output and minimize the CO2 intensity. Mm. Uh, and it's a great example of, of how optimization can be applied to a real asset, mm. and that has significant monetary benefits for the organization, mm. but also has uh, impacts on CO2 as well. Completely. And then I guess the, the customer side is, is becoming increasingly important. It's, in, in our data strategy, we talk about pricing optimization, we talk about loyalty. So yeah. what, what are some of your favorite use cases there? Well, I love what we've done in the UK. Um, I, I think many of you, many people will be aware, I guess this is probably gonna be seen by a lot of people in the UK, and some of them will be familiar with the Shell Go Plus app. Mm. Um, uh, as you probably know, what we've tried to do is innovate around the way in which we offer our customers loyalty, the, the customers that come to our retail stations mm. on, on a day-to-day -day basis. And the idea is to give them a real uh, surprise and delight experience. So we want to try and make their experience with Shell be memorable, be exciting, mm. uh, and, and really modernize the way in which we do that through a mobile phone. And of course, what we're trying to do is learn from the behaviors of our customers. We want to know what sort of fuel they want to buy, if they buy convenience retail items with us, what, what are they interested in, yeah. and then to try and give them offers and rewards that really are aligned to their interests. Mm -hmm. And of course, that also plays into uh, the energy transition. As, as you probably know, we, if you are a loyalty member, we now offset all of the CO2 emissions mm -hmm. that you generate mm -hmm. uh, with Shell. And so again, there's a we see that coming together to try to, and we're trying to innovate with our customers around how we can work together through some of this transition. Great, fantastic use cases. Thank you, Dan. Thanks very much.